Hi, I'm Tim uh, Timothy Brussel, and I'm here with my Math 1325 class today. We're looking at uh, the second derivative and concavity. Let's review what we've seen so far. First of all, f double prime, that's called the second derivative. And the second derivative that is the derivative of f prime. So the second derivative is just the derivative of f prime. And we're going to look at three general uh, applications for the second derivative. The first one was acceleration. We said that velocity is the derivative of position and acceleration is the derivative of velocity. I'll use a v for velocity, which means it's the second derivative of position. And we did a couple of examples using acceleration or involving acceleration. At least one example. Am I correct? Do I remember that? Yes? I think we did a problem. I recall I made a table. <coughs> if I remember correctly, I, I made some sort of, I was in a table making mood for that problem. I'm not sure why I did, but I made a table. And then we said concavity. That's where we spent most of our time the last time. If a graph is concave upward on an interval, its second derivative is positive. And if a graph is concave downward on an interval, then we expect its second derivative to be negative. And we did some uh, concavity problems in class. The third uh, application of this uh, second derivative that I wanted to look at is the point of diminishing returns. Where? Uh, yes. Thank you. There should be a prime there. Thank you. The point of diminishing returns. And that's what I want to talk about today. A point of diminishing returns. A, a point of diminishing returns is just an inflection point that occurs when a graph is concave upward and then it changes to concave downward. That inflection point is referred to as the point of diminishing returns. It's concave upward to the left, <coughs> concave downward to the right. So that little point there is just the inflection point. And that uh, inflection point is called the point of diminishing returns. A good example of uh, the point of diminishing returns is advertising dollars. That's probably the uh, primary use for the point of diminishing returns. Think about advertising dollars. Up to a point, the more money you spend on advertising, the greater your sales revenue. You sell more of the item. But eventually, it gets to a point where you can keep on spending more money on advertising, but everyone that's going to buy your product already knows about it. As a matter of fact, if you keep on spending and it's an annoying commercial, you could turn people off. They could say, okay, I'm not going to buy that anymore because I'm sick of their commercial. That uh, point at which uh, advertising dollars should no longer be spent is that point of inflection right there. Because up to a point, revenue is increasing very rapidly. Then, when you get to that inflection point, revenue is no longer increasing that rapidly. Notice it is increasing, but it's just not increasing as rapidly as it was. Wall Street loves growth. They want you to be growing fast. And as soon as growth slows down, then in a business world, they're they're not that fond of that uh, company anymore. 
same thing's true there. They want to get a whole lot of return on their investment for advertising dollars. And as soon as they start getting a lower return on their advertising dollars, that money, that additional money they're spending is considered a bad use of company resources. To illustrate, to illustrate, I have an example here. Let me, let me hold on a minute. I'm going to zoom this in. Oh, it isn't. Okay. Okay, there's the problem. Find the point of diminishing returns x, y for the function r of x, where r of x represents the revenue in thousands of dollars, and x represents the amount spent on advertising in thousands of dollars. They give us a revenue function. They want us to find the point of diminishing returns. Now keep in mind, just an inflection point does not necessarily mean a point of diminishing returns. A point of diminishing returns occurs when the graph is concave upward and then changes to concave downward. So that's what we have to show. Well, that means we need to find the second derivative. Before you can find the second derivative, what do you need to do? Find the first derivative. So let's find our prime. There's the function we're differentiating. The constant function, uh, the constant factor 4 27ths, we're just going to bring down. I guess you could go through and distribute through if you wanted to, but that would just give you messier numbers. So I just bring it down and, dis uh, and differentiate the inner function, that uh, polynomial. The derivative of negative x cubed is. Negative 3x squared, okay. The derivative of 62, no, 66x squared is a positive 132x. The derivative of 150x is not 150, 1150. Watch out, that's a 1150. And resist the urge to set that equal to zero. That's not the function we set equal to zero. If we were looking for increasing and decreasing, we'd have to set that derivative equal to zero. What do we do next? Find the second derivative. Okay, so now our double prime. Bring down the 427th. That's one thing that's nice here. When we find the second derivative, we're not even going to have a quadratic expression remaining. Differentiating inside, we get... So negative 6x plus 132. We need to know when is r double prime equal to 0. So we set r double prime equal to 0. The only way that's going to equal 0 is for the negative 6x plus 132 to be 0. So set negative 6x plus 132 equal to 0. That says 6x is equal to a negative 132. So dividing both sides by negative 6x equals a negative 132. I'm getting a 22. Is my mental arithmetic correct? 132 divided by 6, I'm getting a 22. So if there's a point of diminishing returns, it has to occur when x is 22. So that means uh, if there's a point of diminishing returns, they should spend $22,000 on advertising and no more. After that, the remaining money they would spend on advertising is not a good use of company resources. So. Draw our number line. We're looking at the sine of R double prime. There's 22. Notice this function is only good for x values between 0 and 25. So we're going to 
only look from 0 to 25 I guess the smallest x value, the easiest x value I could plug in would be 0. So over here to the left of 22, I'll test 0. That'll give me r double prime equals 4 27th times. 0 plus 132 is a 132. Positive or negative? Positive. That means the graph is concave up. And what do you think I'll check to the uh, right of 22? 25? <coughs> yeah, I could use 23 or 24. I'll test 25. I'll change colors. That'll give me an R double prime is equal to 4 27ths times negative 6 times 25, is that a negative 150 plus a 132? All that matters is positive or negative. And what have we got here? Negative. So concave downward. Do we have a point of diminishing returns? Yes, because it was concave upward to the left concave downward to the right. The point of diminishing returns, they want it written as an ordered pair, as a point. So, you plug in 22 for x. Where are you going to plug it in? You plug that 22 into the original function, and I don't even have a calculator. <laughs> Let's see. Plug it in that 22. I'm getting and I got an error. Let's see. There it is. Mm -hmm. And they want it rounded to the nearest tenth. What are y'all getting? I'm getting a 6,843 point nine so when they spend twenty-two thousand dollars on advertising, their revenue is six thousand eight hundred forty-three point nine thousand dollars. So what would that be over six million dollars? Any questions? Ah, wait, there. Any questions there? <coughs> 